So let us think about Jesus' head. We don't know what Jesus actually looked like and we'll all have a different image of him uh, and of his head in our minds. But however we imagine him, we know that soon after the beginning of his ministry, he was recognized by many hundreds of people who flocked to see him and to hear his teaching. Teaching that was the overflowing of a mind set on God. Jesus was not only filled with the knowledge of the scriptures, but filled with wisdom, feasting his eyes on the natural world and talking about God in the parables of everyday life. With his eyes, he saw the widow putting her last coin in the temple collection. With his ears, he heard the tone of people's voices and what they were really saying. With his mouth, he challenged and comforted. This is the head on which the Spirit of God descended at his baptism when he began his ministry. And the head that was anointed at Bethany with costly perfume for the day of his burial. When we think about wounds to Jesus' head, we probably most often think of the crown of thorns. But I think we must consider that the first occasion on which Jesus' head is wounded is the kiss of Judas. Some kind of sign had to be agreed between Judas and the authorities so that the right man was apprehended. And it's pointing that a kiss, a sign of respect and affection, became that mark of identity for Jesus' execution. The betrayer's assault, not physically painful, but personally destructive, violating a special bond of trust. The other abuses to Jesus' head take place during the trial and torture, spitting, blindfolding, mocking, and striking on the head with a stick by soldiers who are having just some cruel fun. The air of menace and intimidation would have been overwhelming. Hitting someone on any part of the body is painful, but the head is particularly vulnerable. Slapping the face and spitting in it is particularly offensive. It is as the culmination of all these abuses that Jesus receives the crown of thorns which pierced the flesh of his head. The ironic crown of kingship. One of our own heads, our heads which have been washed in the water of baptism and anointed with oil to mark us out as belonging to Christ. How do we use our heads to bring in Christ's kingdom? To see and hear those who need help and comfort right on our doorstep. To speak the word of the gospel, of God's reckless love for everyone, words of forgiveness against those who've wronged us, and words of penitence to those we have wronged. To hold our tongue when tempted to judge, and to use our minds to think through issues of justice and theology which will shape our actions and our lives. We too have been crowned with Christ, anointed with oil and the spirit as a sign of our participation in the community of the anointed one and the royal priesthood of the church. Let us consider, as we consider the wounds on the head of Christ, how we live out this precious calling as his anointed. <laughs>